minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Thursday morning. Hope you're doing well. Nice looking day out there. We have become a little bit complacent with hurricanes in Florida because it's been since 2004. Am I right? Is that right? 2004, Robin? 2004, since we had any hurricanes that really, really affected us. And that year, I believe there were four hurricanes that came through the area, two of which hit Ocala. Uh, and I remember that year, everybody was saying, everybody was saying, I got to buy a generator. If I had had a generator, I could have had electricity instead of being without electricity for two weeks. Some people were without electricity for two weeks. I was without electricity for, I think, I think five days, if I remember right. I think so. How long were you out of electricity? Uh, I I was one of the lucky ones. I was not. You so were my, not? Yeah, my, my folks came over to my place because they were out of electricity, and they stayed with me about a week. And I remember the uh, the office where we uh, broadcast from was out of electricity, except for our office because we had a, a generator for the radio station. Uh, anyway, there's a storm out there right now called uh, Tropical Storm Danny, unless yep. they've upgraded it since this morning. It might be Hurricane Danny. And right now, not to you know alarm you because it doesn't have any indication that it will hit us. However, they are saying it is expected to hit Puerto Rico by next Tuesday. Now, we're not real close to Puerto Rico, but we sort of kind of are in that direction you see so in the path uh, of trajectory yeah it, it could it could happen and we might have one for the first time since 2004. Uh, which seems like forever ago. but and, and then, of course, we all remember Katrina and Andrew and, of course, uh, all the other ones. Jared Ab- Abrogina is on the phone. He's a storm cleanup expert. He happens to be an arborist as well. In fact, that's the one thing I'm most concerned about is the trees near my home. Uh, he happens to be a world champion tree climber. Mm-hmm. Uh, and did you know? Did you know that goats climb trees too? I saw this thing. On, oh, on I never knew that. I'll have I, to talk to my brother about that. I thought it was silly, but uh, I guess goats climb trees. Anyway, he's going to give us some storm safety tips and advice on weatherproofing our homes. Jared Abergina, good morning, Jared. Hey, good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Where are you right now? I'm actually in North Carolina. I'm uh, at the Husqvarna. Isn't it? Isn't oh. isn't it? <laughs> You okay? Isn't it strange how North Carolina has ha- has been the target of so many storms? Usually, it, was, it used to be Florida, but a lot of them that we missed, you got. Yeah, actually, I'm originally from California, but yeah, I do see them. Oh, okay, okay. So you're originally from a, a non-hurricane state, but you got plenty of earthquakes, so that, that's your problem out there. So how did yeah. you? How, before we get into the the serious topic, how did you become a champion cl- tree climber? Well, you know, for me, I'm second generation coming into this. So, uh, you know, obviously born and raised into tree care um, through my family um, and kind of got into competitions watching my pops, got into tree care watching my pops and uh, just kind of ran with it and kept going. Oh, really? And one of the things we have had around here, and I'm guessing everywhere, anywhere there's trees, is that when there's a storm, there will be a certain number of trees that fall down. Yes. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, it could be on your house, could be on a power line. Uh, yeah. As and as an arborist, uh, how do you uh, protect the trees on uh, people's properties that use it as uh, tree farms? Because we've had a few storms this year that have actually uprooted trees. Yeah, you know, for me as, as a professional, there's uh, a lot of ways you can go about it. You know, uh, obviously going out there evaluating trees for me, um, I, I can. It's easy for me to see what trees have potential for failure. Right, but you know, for for homeowners, the best thing you can do is to evaluate trees, is walk through your property, um, and and take take a look around and see what trees are, are in in target of your house, and and what trees you know maybe dead or you know around power lines, and, and kind of be proactive about uh, some tree care and tree work around your property. And the thing I learned firsthand is that a tree that looks healthy may not be. I uh, my quick story is that a tree actually fell. Well, no, not the whole tree, but a huge portion of the tree mm-hmm. fell right between my home and the home next door. Missed both houses. Uh, f- very am- amazingly so. Yes. But but the limbs, the very outer part of the limbs, were literally touching my walls and his walls. That's how big this this yeah. piece is. And I remember I was in bed when it, when it snapped, and it was a, it was like an explosion. It was so loud. It was mm-hmm. so such a big loud right. snap, yeah. Yeah, and this is typical for you know the time of year. You know, we we get a bunch of growth during the spring and summer, and you know winter comes, and then we get these high winds and a, a lot of rain, and it's kind of a, a recipe for for failure sometimes. You know, so yeah. that, at that point, you know that's where you you call a professional office to come in, kind of evaluate it for you. You know, a lot of the tasks that 
you know, we may give or, or recommend, you know, could be done by a homeowner, you know, so, um, you know, from the ground. So if there's trees, small trees and whatnot that could be removed, whether it be dead or diseased, um, you know, homeowners could could take care of it if they had a chainsaw. Jared, my notes say that we're going to talk about weatherproofing your home. Since we've talked about trees pretty much the whole time so far, do you, is, that, is that something we overlook? We don't think about getting an arborist out there or a tree specialist or a tree surgeon, as they used to say, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I think it's an overall uh, kind of plan, right? Having a plan before a storm from inside to out. So, you know, whether it be you know, starting from the inside of your house and, you know, having your family know a safe place to go and, and meet and, and out of the way of, you know, glass breaking or overhead uh, items falling on you, you know, the real basic things, like having a, a safety kit, uh, emergency kit, something with, you know, blankets, batteries, flashlights, uh, first aid kit, you know, these items that, we take for granted. We know we have them in the house, but where are they? You know, if we don't have power, can't get to them. So um, I think just having a simple, you know, few part plan um, before storm, and then obviously, you know, prior to the storm, you can you can prep the outside of your house, making sure all your storm storm uh, storm drains and waterways and all that are clear, so your house doesn't flood. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when when uh, people make up their their different kits uh, for uh, self preservation, should they also make up separate kits for the children with little games and stuff in it? Yeah, huh. most definitely. I mean, they, you know, the more the merrier. You never know with a storm, right? It could be uh, you could be locked up for a day, you could be locked up for weeks, or you know, you may just have to get to the point where you got to cut yourself out of the house and and, and have equipment handy um, to do so. You might so. have to have actual board games. You might yeah. have to. You might have to say, you know what, the video games are not going to be on this week. You might right. need board games. Yeah, I remember when when we had those storms in two thousand four. It was the first time I had ever gone through this, and uh, I, I re- here's the the stupid thing on my part. I was stupid to think this was going to be cool. I thought this is going to be cool. It's going to be a hurricane coming through. But then when it was actually coming through, it was like I was praying to God that nothing would fall over. Yeah. There, there was yeah. a there was a tree in my yard that year. But it was a small tree, and it just it just fell over like nothing, mm-hmm. like there was nothing to it. And I can remember trees like I could see in the distance down the road that were leaning over. It's like holy cow! I didn't yeah. know they could lean over that much, you know. So yeah, well, like I said, with you know heavy rains and and, and some wind, you know, it's uh, kind of a, a good recipe for for trees to fail. But that, you know, at that that point, you know, you don't want to go cut down trees for no reason. That's where you get a professional opinion and and. and you know, right, right, that. right. And is that why it's good for the people that are actual city workers or county workers to go up and down the roads before storm season to see what kind of limbs are hanging over the roads so they can take care of it before a storm happens? Yeah, I think certain cities and counties they do that, you know, but you know, as a homeowner, you can be proactive, right? And make sure if you got, you know, trees overhanging, you know, the power lines, you know, maybe make a call, you know, a storm's coming. You know, make call, make sure it gets done before it actually happens, or don't you know rely on on, on people to to have it done. You know, just take the next step. And, and you know who was the hero in many cases? Well, I don't want to leave out the real heroes, the firefighters, and, and the, even the power guys were heroes that year. Uh, but there were some individuals who just happened to have like a chainsaw. Yeah. And they were, I mean, they literally got people out of their uh, driveways. If they were stuck in the driveways, they weren't hurt, hurt in danger, but they couldn't go anywhere. The tree fell in the way or in the road. Mm-hmm. I remember a couple of right. times driving down the road, just on the, well, not to this studio that we have now, but to the old studio. Uh, and there was a guy out there, a, pr- a private individual, just cutting up a tree. So yeah. I don't know if you want yeah. to recommend <laughs> that or not. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and that's great. You know, I, I've been running Husqvarna Fire Chainsaws my whole life, ever since I was, you know, 15 years old. Oh, wow. And, you know, you know, a, a lot of it is, is having you know, proper education and training, right? And so, you know, you go down and you buy a saw, you know, you want to make sure you're, you're trained and you do the research and you read the operator's manual and you, and you go the extra steps because, you know, chainsaw is a great tool, but it could be very dangerous as well. A lot of people don't think think beyond that. You know, they think, oh, okay, it's great. I'm going to go cut this up. But they don't realize you need PPE, which is personal protective equipment, right? So, you know, glasses, ear, ear protection, gloves, chaps. Oh, you know, right, right, right. Little things that right. if you have a chainsaw, you should have this this other, you know, kit of, uh, of, of safety equipment as well. Uh, well, we're almost out of time here. Uh, give us uh, some, a website we can go to for more information uh, about any of the things we've talked about, please. Yeah, definitely. Go to www.huskavarna.com. They got a ton of great information. They got how-to videos, whether it's maintaining your chainsaw or uh, you know felling a tree or you know basic operations. Ton of great information, great resource. 
I'd totally recommend going there first. I just went to your website, and I, I see the robotic lawnmowers. Now, that's something I want right there. <laughs> You're going to get one. That's today. what I want. <laughs> you got enough grass out here. You know. Yeah, just 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 put that thing out there and come back later, and I'll just drink some tea and watch it work. <laughs> Sounds good, uh, Jared. Thank you for being on the air with us this morning. And uh, I don't know if that storm's going to come our way, but hopefully you're safe and we're safe. And uh, and and if not, we're prepared to be whatever. We might come up and stay with you if it starts hitting us. A lot of people do that. They will go to yeah. North North Carolina. I don't know why exactly. North Carolina. It's safe. It's mountain. Uh, and if that gets bad, just come out to California. Nothing ever happens. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Except for the earthquakes. <laughs> uh, Jared, thank you for being on the air. And it, it's a great reminder. We have become complacent with this. So it, it is good to be reminded that we need to uh, be on our toes, as they say. We'll take a little break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be partly sunny today with a couple of thunderstorms around, mainly during the afternoon hours over the interior of the high 88 to 92. Then partly cloudy tonight, those 73 to 77.